have a look at some of the astonishing concepts created over the years. Back in the 1930s, the idea of creating an expressive automobile to explore new worlds of design and technology may have seemed as fanciful as spaceflight. General Motors was the first manufacturer to take this step, and the result was the Buick Y-Job, a car that is widely acknowledged as the industry's first true concept car. This was the actual car driven by GM Vice President of Design Harley J. Earl through the streets of Gross Point, Michigan on sunny summer afternoons, just to get the reactions from the punters. Even if you don't like it, it's astonishingly different from anything else from the late 1930s. This is the X2000, a concept from the 1950s. Unbelievably, this promotional film from Ford is for real, when science fiction B-movies featuring cardboard spaceships were all in fashion. An enthusiastic Brit, Andy Saunders, actually built his own working version of the X2000 concept. Pretty wild. And in 1955, we had the astonishing Thunderbird, which developed from concept to production car very quickly, spurred on by the enormous enthusiasm of the American public. When this film was first shown on American flickering black and white screens, countless viewers would have had their tongues on the floor, astonished by the car's lines, and overwhelmed by an irresistible urge to save up and buy one. Then in 1958, at the General Motors Development Center, this curious concept car saw the light of day for the first time. Looking a bit like the Batmobile with its twin-domed roof, these gentlemen in white coats are about to show an amazed world, the Firebird 3. Here's Bob McLean, the styling engineer of General Motors in the late 50s, to tell us all about it. Firebird 3 is the third in a series of experimental cars we have helped design here at General Motors Styling. Firebird 1 was a high-performance vehicle and reflects the sweeping lines of a jet fighter. Firebird 2 was styled as a family car with additional engineering features. In designing Firebird 3, our job at Styling is to integrate the new developments of research and engineering into a fully operational, eye-appealing car. In 1958, they didn't have computer-aided design. The Firebird 3 was created with the use of um, cardboard cutouts. We start with a man, Oscar, and design the car around him. Basically, we need a passenger capsule and a power package. By putting a control stick here, at Oscar's side, we could develop a new means of entry and give Oscar a semi-reclining seat to put him in the most comfortable driving position. Today, the city of Detroit, particularly downtown, is a very shabby affair with block after block of derelict offices and factories. According to motoring historian Bob Casey, Detroit's huge success contributed to its eventual downfall. Detroit had created something the world had never seen before, a low-skill but high-wage job. But Detroit was always looking for more productivity, and as you begin to get into, especially the 1960s and 1970s, Detroit found itself in the same position that, that American agriculture had been. At the turn of the century, half of Americans lived on farms. Today, about 3%. We haven't stopped growing food. We've just produced it much more efficiently. That's one of the things that's going on. We can produce these automobiles much more efficiently. With extra competition from more efficient car plants around the world, by the 1960s, the city lost its competitive advantage. Detroit, unfortunately, became a one industry town during its heyday. And as that one industry began to, to shrink for a whole variety of reasons, it meant the town began to shrink. 